conspiracy. So there's this very interesting approach, which I think is what has helped Lyft or LMS be successful of building on top of something people have already adopted rather than trying to go out and say like, hey, why don't you come create a course using this new technology we've created that no one's ever heard of before. Hello, and welcome to Course Lab, the show that teaches course creators like you how to create better online courses. I'm Danny Eaney, the founder and CEO of Miracy, and I'm here with my co-host, Abe Crystal, the co-founder of Rizuku. Hey there, Danny. For most of our episodes, we generally showcase a course and creator who is doing something unique with their course. But for the next few episodes, we're doing something different. Abe and I are going beyond the design of courses themselves to dive into the platforms that host them. Because building a course platform isn't just about creating some basic functionalities. It's about having a vision for where the industry is headed, and then building the technology to enable that vision. Each of the platform creators in this mini-series has a different perspective on where the industry is headed and what that means for you. Our guest today is the CEO of Lifter LMS, Chris Badgett. Welcome, Chris. Great to be here, Danny. So, Chris, we go way back, but for people who don't necessarily have that history with you, first of all, just, you know, what's your story? Where are you in the world? How did you come to the world of online courses? And how did you make that jump from online courses seem interesting to, you know, maybe I should build a technology platform for supporting the creation of online courses? Well, here's the quick version of that story. So I live on the coast of Maine on a little organic farm with my wife and kids. We homeschool our kids and I run my software company from a little cabin in the backyard of our farm. Before getting into this industry, I was completely an offline person. I lived in Alaska. I used to run sled dogs up here. I managed a tour business on a glacier that you could only get to by helicopter. And when I left that world in 2010, after the birth of my first daughter, I randomly came across online marketing and internet marketing. I fell in love with it. I needed a new career. I had no business background, no technical background, but I did have a background in anthropology and managing people. And I loved people. And I just fell in love with marketing. Through that experience, I ended up learning how to build websites with WordPress. People started asking me to pay me to build them websites with WordPress. Over that time, I grew an agency to 17 people. We started focusing on the Infusionsoft market, and we did high-end custom learning management systems built on top of WordPress for experts, speakers, coaches in the early days of that industry who were also using Infusionsoft. A tool to do that off the shelf with WordPress did not exist. So we decided to stop building these learning management systems for scratch for high-end clients and build a solution for WordPress. That's where Lifter LMS is born. In that journey, I also created some of my own courses in the organic gardening and permaculture niches. And I would partner with experts all over the world, kind of who had no technical or marketing expertise. So that's kind of my experience in actual course creation myself. But it's been a very windy journey to here. But I love this and I feel like I'm just getting started in this industry, even though it's been a decade. Very cool. And I didn't know about the organic gardening courses. So maybe we need to have you back to talk about that at some point. But for right now, tell us, first of all, how long has it been since Lifter LMS has actually been a thing as opposed to, you know, a custom design shop? It's almost eight years old. Started in 2014. Wow. Well, time flies. It sure does. So tell us about the evolution. Like, you know, when you go into any kind of new product development, whether it's a course, whether it's a software product, you have a certain idea for what it's going to be and how it's going to work. And then, you know, Steve Blank says, no business plan survives contact with the customer. So how has that vision kind of gelled with the market and what it wants? How has it evolved? What has changed over those eight years? Well, for us, we were never outside of the customer. Like our customers as an agency were demanding it. So we were building exactly what they were asking for. So we always kind of had that customer front focus. From the early days, there there was a lot of fractioning in the market in the sense that, you know, there were these different membership solutions, different payment solutions, different LMS, different reporting stuff, e-learning authoring tools. So what the market really did for us in the beginning is they're like, I just want an all-in-one tool and I want to do it on the WordPress site that I'm already using. And that was kind of the genesis of it. 
And, you know, really the big trends I've seen moving to more higher end premium courses has been a trend. The rise of online communities as a part and social learning as a part of the online learning needs of the creator. And how all those things influence the results of the learner is really quite fascinating. The challenge in this whole market is learning is what makes us human. It's literally an integral part of you know what we do and how we exist. Is how do we create effective online learning that doesn't become overly complicated to create and consume, that has just the right amount of content, community, coaching, And other things as well, kind of mixed into that. And not every learning scenario needs all of that. But one of the challenges is people can kind of get things overcomplicated. And a a big problem in our industry is failure to launch. People kind of get in the weeds. So there's just so many things happening in this industry. And it just continues to snowball and accelerate. So what is your philosophy on what it takes to successfully engineer that kind of learning, that kind of transformation? And then how is that philosophy expressed in the feature set and functionality of Lifter LMS? Well, you mentioned the word transformation. You know, I like to say that we've moved beyond the information age to the results age or the integration age. And to do that transformation without overwhelming the learner, you know, minimum effective content and community and support, whether you call it coaching or it's email support or forum support or whatever it is you're doing, all these pieces are really important. So really the framework I use to help people, and it's also one we use to design the software around, is what I call the five hats problem, where people who are going to create online courses, you know, obviously they need to be an expert or somebody on the team. There's got to be the subject matter expertise but they also have to be a technologist. They also have to be a community builder. They also have to be a teacher or instructional designer. And they also have to be an entrepreneur, which includes things like marketing and sales and building a business that can function in society. So we like to keep things simple, but by building for us in the WordPress ecosystem, it's so vast in terms of off-the-shelf functionality and customization ability that you can keep it really simple and, you know, even just do a passive course with no community or coaching or anything. And maybe it's only a mini course of like five lessons, or you can build a giant multi-instructor platform like Udemy, but on your own website. So in WordPress particularly, and for us at Lifter LMS, the challenge has always been, how do we serve the beginner, the person who has simple needs? Maybe they're not highly experienced in technology yet, but also serve the advanced developer, engineer, or power user that has big goals and vision. So the way that's informed our product roadmap is we essentially try to take care of the ends and let the middle take care of itself. So on the far end, on the power user side, you know, there's what's known as an API for people to build mobile apps and integrate any other software, anything they need to do to build the bespoke learning platform of their dreams. While for the beginner user, you know, we have a simple, quick setup wizard that can launch all the critical pieces of the site and they can import a simple course that they can just start replacing our text and videos with theirs. And everything that happens in between, those people can fall where they may on the spectrum. But it's quite the challenge to serve a beginner who perhaps just has a blog or a website for their business or a personal site to that power user. So I have a question about kind of the whole WordPress versus cloud decision. Um, Who is delivering their software on a WordPress host it yourself kind of basis? Everything seems to be moving in the direction of cloud and therefore subscription. And I'm curious, is that a function of just circumstance? Like, you know, you started building website stuff on WordPress and so that's what you've been locked into. Is it a function of a decision around business model? Is it a function of decision around the direction that you see the industry going? Or is it a function of the customer segment that you're going after, which wants that kind of extensibility and modularity? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I first started getting into marketing and I I wanted to launch my first website And I started a blog around leadership, which was really important to me as a guy who used to run remote teams in Alaska. I bought a domain name called OutdoorTribe.com. There's nothing there now. 
But I just went to YouTube and I Googled how to build a website and I ended up on a YouTube tutorial about how to build a site with WordPress in 2008, I believe. So there's some randomness there. That that's where I started. But at the same time, there's some mega trends going on here. One is that WordPress powers 43% of the entire internet. So that is a massive trend and it actually continues to expand in terms of adoption. It's not going to eat the whole internet, but we may settle out around 50% of the internet on top of WordPress. Lifter LMS specifically and, and WordPress in general is very international. So part of it being free open source software in terms of the application layer of WordPress. And even us, we have a core central part of our software that's valuable in and of itself. It's our kind of contribution to that open source software world. It's very valuable and lots of people use it without even buying any of our premium stuff. You did mention subscriptions. We do sell annual subscriptions, not monthly SaaS, but uh, you know our customers are on an annual subscription for their software license, which gives them access to support and updates. But because the market is so massive, and because I didn't know it at the time, but I found out later that for whatever reason, just my particular level of obsessiveness, geekiness, desire for control, desire for affordability, um, you know, doing the agency thing, I ended up just kind of being almost like the perfect customer for WordPress itself. So I, I just kind of grew up inside of that. But I really don't see it going away. I do see it's not for everybody, like you mentioned. And I particularly have noticed as of late, there are so many more SaaS solutions for courses, communities, forums, live streaming. I saw another one pop up yesterday, like this really cool live virtual cohort-based classroom solution, SaaS solution. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And I think what's happening from you know the tension between SaaS versus host it yourself it actually causes innovation because the SaaS market, particularly with the monthly pricing, often more you know like limits or levers on pricing based on numbers of courses or students or revenue and that, those kinds of things, feels tension from the WordPress market where things are more free and open-ended and, and stuff like that. Whereas the WordPress market also feels the pressure of that clean, easier user experience, often more beautiful to create, especially for an amateur and a SaaS solution. So that creates a healthy tension in the market where kind of the hosted version and then the self-hosted version have to innovate because they're, they're kind of competing with each other in a way. But based on the numbers I've seen, I would say probably in e-learning, the majority of the market is actually on hosted solutions and a smaller percentage is on WordPress. And there's other ones out there, other open source solutions like Moodle and things like that. So yeah, that's just a conversation there around the differences. And I see people move back and forth too. Like someone may start on a hosted thing and move over to WordPress or someone may start on WordPress and then pull out their hair and move over to the hosted version. So it's really a dynamic market out there. Just curious where you see it going from here. What are some of the things that you're excited about for the future, you know, both in terms of your own product and in general, how do you see technology for online courses evolving over the next few years? That's awesome. Well, I'll give you the short, medium, and long-term view there. I think in terms of Horizon as a strategist, and in the short term, I'm really excited about what I call the beautification of WordPress. Like It's becoming much easier to make something beautiful. There's a lot of starter templates and page builders on the front end of the websites that are much easier and more powerful and come with a lot of great design functionality. So for the creator in the short term, I see WordPress getting even more and more beautiful and both powerful and a little easier to drive, less techy. In the medium term, what I'm seeing from our perspective is it's about integration of the parts of not just courses. So when you surround the learner, like some companies kind of have a product centric focus, but if you truly put a customer or in our case here in online courses, the in learner at the center, they often need more than just lesson content. They need these coaching pieces, these community pieces, maybe other services, resources, files, all kinds of things like that. So this is providing a full stack solution around the customer, the learner, is really where I think the market's going. I even find it quite challenging in our market here because you know, people use so many different words. They'll say online course. They'll say coaching program. They'll say membership site. They'll say my academy or whatever. 
there's a lack of a unification of language. I mean, people kind of know what an online course is and there's small ones and then there's these giant big ones. So it's almost like the learning creator needs to be able to pull off the shelf the pieces that they need to create the learning experience that the learner needs to not be overwhelmed and have a high likelihood of success, even in challenging circumstances. So I think that's the name of the game in the medium term. You know, in WordPress, I call it the software Frankenstein. You get too many tools made by too many different companies put together to try to create this awesome thing. And it ends up not really working out the way you want. It's hard to to work on or you have some issues with it. But even outside of WordPress, you know, people get a little overwhelmed with, okay, I got my Zoom over here, my CRM over here, my email marketing over here, my course here, my billing system over here, all this stuff. So I think there's a lot of kind of chaos in the market and that's okay. And certain solutions can be a point solution, but I see figuring out how to really capture that learning experience, no matter what people call it, is really where the big opportunity is in the medium term. In the long term, I think where we're going, especially with so much change in traditional education and really the disconnect between higher education and employment, there's just such a high demand for what you've called in the past, Danny, just in, just in time education instead of just in case and really the long tail of the internet where you have all these niches. You know, if you want to get a job at Apple as a developer, you could put together like the perfect learning program. Apple could do it for even particular roles within a company. So we're seeing kind of the unbundling of the traditional education system. And if you go out past that, I do see some interesting things happening in terms of how brands are changing. And we're seeing early signs of this in the Web3 movement with tokenization and social tokens and what degrees mean and you know how we interact with brands, which includes learning. So I'm not going to go deep down a Web3 rabbit hole, but I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of change in terms of how learning content is both created, curated, consumed, and community builds and fluctuates around that. Cool. Chris, I appreciate the depth you went into on each of those answers. Absolutely. Awesome. So Abe, do you want to do the readout? Chris Badgett is the CEO and founder of Lifter LMS, an all-in-one learning management system for WordPress. To learn more about Lifter LMS and how you could use it for your own business, check out lifterlms.com. Now stick around for my favorite part of the show, where Abe and I will pull out the best takeaways and share our own insights as well. So Abe, what jumped out to you in terms of Chris's perspective on where the industry is and where it's going? Yeah, a couple things. One piece we can talk about is, like, what is the balance between hosted versus self-hosted solutions? And how does that evolve in coming years? Which you know, Chris has an interesting perspective on as, as you know, being uh, specifically focused on self-hosted and open source solutions. And then the other is just how does course technology and course platforms, how do they evolve as Essentially, the bar for online education gets higher, right? Which is a theme we've talked about a lot with different course creators and, and designers that people's expectations for online learning have gotten higher. They're looking for more than just content. They're looking for support and interaction and results. And how does the technology evolve to suit those changing needs? So both big topics. Not sure where you want to start. Let's start with the cloud versus self-hosted stuff, because it's been a while since I looked at the stat on how much of the internet is powered by WordPress. And I think the last time I looked, it was 25%. So, you know, it's gone up in quite a striking degree. Yeah, Chris quoted 43%, I think. I mean, arguably, it's a little bit of a vanity metric because there's like millions of tiny and hardly used sites that are driving that number up. But for sure, it shows how much WordPress has grown. And in terms of adoption, it's the dominant solution now for setting up a simple website all the way up to you know a blog with millions of page views a month. So no question, WordPress has like fundamentally changed the landscape of how websites are created and maintained. So that kind of creates an opportunity, right? There's now 
so many millions of people using WordPress. And some of those people want to create courses. So this is very interesting approach, which I think what has helped Lyft or LMS be successful of building on top of something people have already adopted rather than trying to go out and say like, hey, you know, why don't you come create a course using this new technology we've created that no one's ever heard of before? It can be easier to say like, hey, you're already using WordPress. Let us show you a way that you can just add courses to WordPress that you're already comfortable with. So it's definitely a very kind of smart and interesting angle to reach course creators. I think something that came out of the conversation as well that's really interesting is that you've got these kind of two opposing forces where on the one hand, you've got what Chris described as the five hats problem. So you've got to be an expert or subject matter expert. You've got to be a technologist. You've got to be a community builder. You've got to be a teacher, instructional designer. You've got to be the entrepreneur marketer. So in other words, you're just dealing with a lot of complexity. And so the strong need that the course creator has from a software product is that it'd be simple. But then you've got on the other side, you know, what I've been looking at a lot in my own work around hybrid courses is that as the landscape evolves and what people really want from a course creator is not just the information, not just the curation, not even they'd be entertaining with, you know, gamification bells and whistles. They want a real transformation to be delivered. And that means you can't kind of lean into a single silver bullet of, you know, oh, gamification is the magic hammer or cohorts or community or any other one thing right? You've got to take a hybrid approach of being able to adjust all the sliders. And that means complexity. (laughs) So you've got kind of this one drive really pushing towards simplicity and the other drive really pushing towards um, complexity in terms of the extensibility and the modularity that frankly, a lot of SaaS solutions don't do nearly as well because it's a more streamlined host experience. It's, It's not extensible in the same way. We may ultimately see more of a fragmentation where you know, just like in with more mature tools, like, you know, let's say a CRM or email marketing or some other type of business software, there are more simplified solutions targeting like solopreneurs and small business that have more of a focus on ease of use, and they have more constraints to enable ease of use. And then you have enterprise products for very large businesses where the goal is to allow the enterprise to customize it however they want, integrate it deeply into all their data sources and workflows. And it might cost you know millions of dollars to do that, but it's worth it to a big company. And courses haven't gotten to that point yet, but maybe that is where it needs to go so that everyone can have a solution that fits where they are in their life cycle. Well, I think Chris's, Chris's approach to that problem is interesting, right? Because One possible future reality is exactly like you said, like a very fragmented, you know, you've got all the entry level platforms and you've got all the enterprise platforms and essentially you start with one and then graduate to the other, which will happen to some degree for sure. But, you know, when Chris described focusing on the other 20%, the 10% on either end, the strategy is, is building a platform that is robust enough for that enterprise user but with a hope that you can make it modular enough so that for someone who's just getting started, a lot of that extra functionality is invisible and onboarding and setup are still easy. It's, it's a difficult needle to thread, but it's a really cool philosophy of how they're approaching us. Yeah, it's very challenging to get that balance right. But yeah, for sure, if you can pull it off, it can be huge, right? I mean, that's essentially Slack, right? Slack created something that you could just go to their website, set up a chat space for free have friends jump in, easy peasy, but then it can also scale to a huge company with tens of thousands of people on Slack and really complicated enterprise controls to manage all that. Looking at my notes, I don't think I have anything else. Abe, do you want to do the readout? Thank you for listening to Course Lab. I'm Abe Crystal, co-founder and CEO of Riziku, here with Danny Eaney, founder and CEO of Mirsi. Course Lab is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes Just Between Coaches, Making It, and Once Upon a Business. This episode of Course Lab was produced by Cynthia Lamb. Jeff Govertson assembled the episode. Danny Eaney is our executive producer, host production by Post Office Sound. Big thanks to Chris Padgett for coming on today. You can check out Lifter LMS for yourself right over on their site, lifterlms.com. That's lifterlms.com. To make sure you don't miss the really great episodes coming up on Course Lab, Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, the best way to help us keep making it is to leave a starred review or share it with a friend. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.
I think we covered it. Those are some, some really good questions. I'm just excited. These are exciting times for online learning and many of us have been at it for a while, but this whole machine is just really spooling up in my view. So I'm excited to see where we end up. Yeah, it's just starting to tip into a kind of maturity. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. This was fun. Yeah, appreciate it, y'all.